Welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop podcast, the drips of knowledge you need to start growing. Hey, welcome. So today we are going to be talking about a terrible subject, but what happens when you lose money? You know, you're an entrepreneur and you're doing your life and you're trying to build and you're taking risk and you're investing in growth and something happens, whether in your control, not in your control, that causes you to lose um, some revenue and you are stuck or you're in this position where you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So this is a great subject for entrepreneurs, especially Etsy shop owners, because there's a lot of variables you can't control. Like if Etsy all of a sudden makes a gnarly update and it affects your life, that's not really something you can control at this exact moment. You would take time to have to figure that out. And so the, the question is, how can we best prepare ourselves for the, an event as such? And how can we, and what are the steps we will take if and when something like this happens? So before I jump into this, I wanted to make a, um, a quick announcement. So I am coming to the end of our month with, I, with my first growth um, program. And it has been awesome. I, 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 I've received a lot of positive emails and feedback from the, the program so far. And I just like we just were on a call yesterday with each other. It was almost over two hours long. We we're just going over SEO and making the tweaks. And, and yeah, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. So I'm starting to open up my next group, and I'm going to be pulling from the waiting list. So if you're not on that waiting list, you can join at growmyetsyshop.com. Um, but I wanted to make a quick announcement to people from the UK. So my thought is, I'm going to, you know, the way the program is set up, it kind of does favor American time zones. And so because we, we, there's a lot of it that's worksheets and videos and all this kind of stuff, but we do meet and we do one-on-one calls and we do group calls and all this kind of stuff. And so... My thought process is, hey, if I have some people on the waiting list who are UK, but the time zones are gnarly. So if you want to join a all UK group, if you are interested in this, um, first go to Grow My Etsy Shop and go just check it out and see if you're interested in it. And if you are, you can uh, just email me and let me know, hey, I'm from the UK and this is something I'm interested in. If I get enough of you, um, yeah, I'll do a UK group. And so that way we can make it happen. Otherwise, it, it, it will be difficult for you UK people. All right, let's get back to our subject. So we left off at the if and when. So let's talk about the before the problem takes place, and then we'll talk about what we do after the problem takes place. So a very common practice that gets passed around kind of the uh, high-level mastermind um, programs, and if you don't know what these are, there's a lot of communities online that are, they call them masterminds, and it's essentially groups of people who are doing similar things. They're usually led by someone who's had success, and they come together and do these things, and there's some really big ones, and because of my, my day job, I have access to a lot of these people and their trainings that they do, and I, a lot of my uh, clients, I guess, are a part of this stuff. And so a lot of what they learn is I can see incorporated in their business and all this kind of stuff. And there's a, a, a common practice that is kind of popular right now, which is the feeling the emotions of something going wrong before it goes wrong. So for example, I, my, I have four kids and my fourth one was uh, a home birth. And, you know, when my wife originally wanted to, this was our other three, we're not. And so when she originally pitched this, it was kind of like a scary thing for me. And I, you know, just looking at pros and cons and the risks and all that kind of stuff, I felt like there was some risk, a higher chance of risk when it came to an at-home birth. And so we did a lot of uh, research and looked at some stuff and felt like we put a pretty good team together to help support the at-home birth process. However, something in the back of my mind said, I need to be better prepared if something goes wrong. Like I need to kind of have, I guess, processed that emotion ahead of time so that I can be ready to take on the problem if it is to come. So I did, and I took some time to process those emotions and to feel what I would feel if that situation was to happen or if this was to take place so that I could, because you have to feel the emotion. Like it's 100%. If you, if, going back to Etsy, if you lose money in your business, if something happens, there's a big update that takes a lot of money out of your pocket, um, you're going to feel an emotion. And so the question is, should we feel the emotion and kind of go down into the pits when it happens? Or should we kind of already have felt that emotion and then be able to move forward instantly when it does happen because we've processed that emotion? So that's kind of the theory that's behind it. And with, you know, going back to my home birth, um, she ended up 
laboring really slowly and so the, everyone all the team was just kind of like yeah let us know let us know you know could be could be a couple more hours and then it just went <laughs> and all of a sudden the baby was coming out and I had to put on my doctor hat and deliver the baby on my bedroom floor and luckily holy smokes luckily that was part of my <laughs> um, process or part of my um, feeling the emotions that I was able to, I felt the fear and what would I, and how it would be and how I would react in that scenario. So I was able to stay very calm and just kind of go, okay, here we go, baby. And literally, and pull a baby out of my wife. <laughs> so it worked, it was a, the child's three now, so it's all good. And yeah, it was, a, it's, that is a example of a success story, I guess of being able to process an emotion earlier and so when it does happen, you're prepared. So let's look at your Etsy shop now. So there's lots of things you can't control that can go wrong with your Etsy shop and there's lots of things you can control that will go wrong with your Etsy shop. Um, you wanna take those, especially times during when it's settled or you're, you're just kind of like, yeah, consistent I guess is a good word, to kind of look at the two things. One is the growth, so how can I grow? How can I keep moving forward? And the other one is, how can I, what will I do if the risk that I'm taking to grow doesn't work out? Like what happens if that, the worst case scenario takes place? What are my options? How would I feel during this? And really process those emotions and what you would do so that when it happens, you're ready to take a step forward instead of crawl into a hole and die. <laughs> and this is great if you have a team as well. So if you have a team of people, you need to be able to um, stay calm and um, be a good leader during that time. Okay, <clears throat> so let me, let me pull in a real example for you. Um, if you are a, uh, like a digital download, so if you make home decor digital download or art digital download, there is a great hack that has been used by this group for a long time. And it is that when someone buys their stuff, so if someone says, oh, I wanna buy a abstract art for my wall, and they go onto Etsy and they buy your stuff and, they, and it's a digital download and they, yeah, they get it. What a lot of these stores have done, and if you don't do, you should do, is that they become affiliates with um, print-on-demand companies. And so, like there's one called Love Prints, I think is what it's called, Love Prints, that offers pretty good affiliate commissions. And so essentially what you could say is, hey, here's a great place to get a canvas done, and here's the link that you can go, and it's 10% off, because affiliates will give you, a lot of times, a percentage off for the customer. So the customer gets 10% off, so they're stoked. You just send them a 10% off coupon to get their stuff printed. You know they want to print it. Nobody wants to just keep it on their hard drive and never use it. So you're, you get them right when they're hot. You buy them, you send them an email that says, hey, or they buy, you send them an email that says, hey, I got this 10% off coupon for you. This is a great company. They're fast. They work well. It's what I recommend that you use. And they go, man, perfect. Thanks. This is awesome. And then they buy their canvas right there while they're hot. And you know they spend $40 on a canvas and you got a commission from that. So now your little $3 sale just got a couple more dollars added to it from a $40 purchase that took place. And you can essentially double the amount of income that you're making per sale if people are using your affiliate link to do so. And it's kind of just like a win, 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 win. So this has kind of been an underground secret that um, yeah, digital download people have used. And Etsy, I think not maybe a week ago, made an update that there's like, hey, we're gonna do this great thing for your customers. We are gonna offer them print-on-demand options right when they right when they buy your digital product. And so, um, as great, it, it makes sense from Etsy standpoint, because they're like, yeah, we wanna make it a more a, a seamless process. We wanna just make sure that when someone buys, it doesn't just sit on their hard drive. So we're gonna just right after that, partner up with Printify and Shutterfly or whatever, or sh what is it? It's not Shutterfly, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, and we're just gonna, yeah, give them links and they're going to be able to buy their stuff right there. Aren't we great? Aren't you, aren't you stores going to love this? Well, a lot of people went, hey, no, we were doing that. And what happens if, yeah, the you they buy my print, they get it from Printify and Printify gives them problems. Am I, they, are they going to leave a review for me? Are they going to contact me? And now my star seller is going to be how fast I respond to this person's question on a platform I didn't recommend them. And so anyway, they were kind of up in arms about that kind of stuff. So this is an update that could literally affect people's life right now if you're a, if you were doing digital prints and making money off affiliate links from the back end, you yeah, you have a problem ahead of you. So, A, it's good to process the emotion, especially ahead of time of what you're doing. 
And once the emotion's processed, then the next thing you have to do is diagnose what the exact issue is. So what a lot of what we tend to do when things go wrong is that uh, we tend to look at what our life is going to look like after and then try to solve that. So like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be losing this money. Oh, well, maybe I should um, get another job or maybe I should. And it's like, wait, 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 <laughs> hold on. Let's diagnose the actual issue first. So instead of putting our thoughts into the what's at the bottom of the mountain, let's put the thoughts on what's our next step, what's in front of us right now. So the problem is that Etsy is, you know, essentially taking sales away from you because they're taking their affiliate link. But this could be anything, and I want to make it a little bit more broad. So they make an update to the SEO and your stuff falls off. It's kind of one, probably one of the most realistic issues that could take place. And this happens all the time. They update their SEO all the time, and it affects your listings all the time. So we have to be kind of prepared for this. So the first thing you have to do is diagnose, and you have to re recognize, is it something, is it my bad? Or is it something I can't control? Because if it's your bad, meaning you made the mistake or it's something that you, you're inexperienced or just overall you took a risk and it didn't work out, um, these are great problems because usually someone else can solve them. So for example, if you, if you have a website that you're selling stuff and that website cr crashes or people are like, dude, I'm trying to check out and it's not working and you're like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I just ran this, you know, giveaway and I can't do this kind of thing. Well, what can happen is you can hire someone who can solve that problem for you. You get on Fiverr, you can hire someone who can solve that problem for you and it's taken care of. And so those are great problems when it's someone else. And my advice is always either A, if you have the time and the resources, figure it out yourself. But if you don't have the time or the resources, hire someone and just see it as a cost of business. It's a cost of business is that I, I hire people to do stuff for me. And you can write off your taxes later if it makes you feel better. But it's the quickest and easiest way to solve a problem is to hire someone who knows more to solve that problem for you. If it's something you can't control, there's still an option that someone might know the answer to that um, problem, right? And so that's still an option for you, but usually everyone's in the same position of being kind of hosed over when, like for example, the SEO update. That'll hose everybody over. And so the question is, once you diagnose it, the actual diagnosis of this is, my listings are no longer being seen as they once were on Etsy. And you can hear that that's so much of a better way to frame the problem. Because if we frame the problem of, I'm losing money, or Etsy screwed me over, or they updated their SEO and no one knows what's going on. Well, none of that is, it doesn't offer any road to a solution. However, if we look at the problem, remove the emotion from it, and we say, my listings were once being seen, and due to an update, they are no longer being seen. Well, it's so much more clear now. So now we can say, well, what is the update that's taking place, and how can I help transform my listings to be able to be seen again? And that problem seems so much more real and simple. And you know, I know I'm aware it's not simple, but it seems like, I guess clear is the right word I'm, I'm looking for. It just seems clear. You have a path. Where we spiral and lose control is when we don't know what to do, when we're banging our head against the wall. So if instead of banging our head against the wall and saying, it's updated, I'm mad, we then say, what is the actual problem that's here? And how can I start making steps towards the solution? Because as long as you're making steps towards the solution, your brain won't go into spiraling. It will, it will feel confident in so trying to solve a problem. Okay, so let's just say you are. You're working towards trying to figure out this update and da 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 and um, yeah, you're starting to get into spiraling mode because you're running out of ideas and this isn't working. So this is usually the, this is kind of bigger business advice, but um, I think we can apply it to our Etsy shop. So usually the first thing you do is you say, well, how can I pivot? How can I make, because a lot of the times, especially when business is good, we're, we're, we're cruising, you know, we're just kind of doing our thing. And when business goes bad, that's when we get a little bit more innovative. So the most, the, usually the times that people are the most innovative is in the beginning part of their business, when they're launching a product and when their market value starts to drop. So if something starts to happen, that's when they're like, okay, we've got to introduce something new. Um, so in this scenario, that's what this is in your life, is an opportunity to innovate. It's an opportunity to look at what you're doing and to change some things. And now, you know, before it would be a volunteer 
uh, thing that you would do. You would volunteer your time to be innovative. Now you're being forced to be in innovative. And so with our back against the wall, the buzzer counting down, um, that forced innovation can sometimes be good for our business. So you want to pivot and look at opportunities to make more money. So for example, you might have looked at other options to sell your stuff, not just on Etsy. And so now's the time that you're going to kind of pivot some stuff over there and do that. You might have some other products that you feel like are, you could be putting up that you've kind of put on the back. Well, now's your time to get that stuff up. You might feel like you want to do grow my program or whatever. I can't name, think of the name of my own program. And that's a good time. You know what I mean? Like there's just so much options that you can do. Growth program, that's what it's called. <laughs> there's just so much options you can do when your back is against the wall and you want to be able to pivot. The other option is, of course, and I'm a big believer of this. You'll notice I have a day job as well, is that I try to diversify my income as much as possible. And the way I do that is to say, what, where could I spend my time that's going to create a, you know, monetary value for me that I don't necessarily have to ch exchange hours for uh, money. So like print on demand, or I'm sorry, digital print or print on demand is usually people who have that mindset is they're trying to be able to have a business that makes the money without costing them time. And so it's always wise, especially when you're growing an Etsy shop and all this kind of stuff, to have at least a little something um, that you can make a little money on the side of what you're doing, just in general. And that could be a good time if you start to see some of your sales to be like, you know what, I'm going to try to see if I can get some some writing gigs or something like that to kind of get going. So usually in bigger business, it's like, how can you diversify your income? How can you pivot and get some money some other places? When it comes to Etsy shop owners, I think that kind of looks like for you, like, hey, how can I make an extra... X amount of dollars this month kind of working from home because the with Etsy shop owners the busier you are the more is because you guys all fulfill your own stuff the busier you are the 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 busier your life is and so when sales stop your entire time opens up you know what I mean like everything opens up for you and so you can take an opportunity to kind of be like hey I'm going to take on this work or I'm going to you know, it could be as simple as I'm going to babysit my neighbor's kids or something like this. Like just something that's going to help kind of cover some costs while you're getting yourself up and going again. The next thing that you can do, and this is a little bit more um, extreme, is that you can cut costs. So Etsy does a great job. This is another uh, perk of Etsy is that, yeah, if, if all of a sudden sales stop coming in, you're not having, you don't have all this cost that's built up. You know, like, oh my gosh, I'm paying for all these huge subscriptions. I mean, maybe your Marmalade or something like that, but like, I'm paying for all these huge subscriptions and things, and now my business isn't doing well, and I got this, you know, I got payroll type thing. Like, most of us aren't running payroll, and so your costs also go down when Etsy's not as busy. But there's other things that you can do to help cut some costs in your life, whether it's subscriptions or whatever it may be, to just kind of cut back what you're doing, even if it's in your own personal life, even if you're, if you're, you know, I love, I don't know if you guys know who Jody Moore is, but I love Jody Moore. Um, even if it's Jody Moore subscription, you can cut back from Jody Moore and take some, you know, just kind of collect some money that um, is falling back and be able to kind of have some money to sit on. And so that way you feel kind of, because a lot of this, what this does when we cut is it just gives us this peace of mind of like, okay, I'm, it, it's that taking step forward process, right? Where we spiral is when we're, we're just stuck in the problem. But if we're taking steps forward, and that can be kind of saving some money in other places, being innovative, looking for someone else to solve a problem, diagnosing ahead of time, like this is what's gonna kind of keep you sane while going through this process. So to recap, you want to experience the emotion now. So just this alone, experiencing the emotion and being able to clearly diagnose, which is step two, just those two steps are gonna make a world of difference to your mental health and your ability to grow. Because if you experience the emotion now, so for example, you might feel pressure from your spouse, for example, like your spouse is kind of like maybe not overly supportive of what you're doing or thinks you spend too much time or money on what it is that you're trying to grow. And so you need to experience the emotion of like, well, what happens if I do lose money this month? And my husband or wife comes to me and says, hey, you're spending too much money or you're, you're wasting too much time or whatever. Like, how would I feel in this situation? How would I handle that situation? How can I move forward from that as a, from a positive standpoint? And if you experience that motion now and you start to project that, you know, let's just say six months from now, there's maybe a month that that's going to happen, you're more mentally prepared in strength to be able to take on that conversation. You know, and I know this is like a really weird <laughs> subject, but it's a common one that I hear. So, you want to be mentally prepared and have, and when you're mentally prepared, you have strength. 
Yep, you have strength going forward. You've you've thought about those things, and so you're not being blindsided by this conversation that you don't have the answers for. You do. You've processed the emotion, and you can move forward. And when you have processed the emotion, it helps you diagnose. So when the actual issue takes place, you're not emotionally charged. You're clear-headed and you can properly diagnose and you're going to know what the exact problem is. So it's not Etsy screwed me over and I'm hosed, but instead Etsy changed their list, their SEO algorithm and my listings that were once being seen aren't being seen right now. And then we can say, if it's Etsy hosed me over, you know, and you bring that to Jared, a coach, for example, I'm going to go, uh, I don't know how to help you. But if you say Etsy updated SEO and I can no longer see I'm no longer being seen. It's like, oh, well, let's work on that, right? From there, once you have processed your emotions and are clear-headed and are properly diagnosing your issues, you then go into the next phase, which is to, well, either A, if you can solve the problem, just solve the problem. But if you can't solve the problem, you're going to start having the mindset of, I'm going to be working towards solving the problem. So this comes from um, putting more money into your business. So whether that's to... Um, diversify your income, to innovate your income, or to create new income. That's, I guess, the, let's put it as there. Diversify, innovate, create. <laughs> That's pretty good. That will help you kind of see what, these are my options going forward, right? I can diversify, I can innovate what I'm currently doing, or I can create new um, versions of income. And then, of course, the, the last option is where can I cut costs or where can I make this more um more manageable for me. And so you go through and you cut some of those costs. Now, what's nice about cutting costs is that sometimes you'll realize that you can survive without those products and your business costs have just gone down. And all it took was something like this for that to happen. Okay, so this was kind of a depressing episode. I apologize. It's never fun to talk about the loss of money, but it's a complete reality that all of you are going to feel in your life. All of you are going to not make as much money as you did the month before or even lose money in what you're doing. It is part of being an entrepreneur. And it's what makes entrepreneurship worth it and going is that you build it. It's you that does it. It's you that goes through all this kind of stuff. And so it's great. It's empowering and it helps you. And so, you know, at this point in my life, you know, through just entrepreneurial stuff of my own, like I do have a different relationship with money. It allows me to, um, I see money as opportunity to grow and to, um, yeah, become and create the life that I want to live. And I understand that I'm going to have to invest money to do those kind of things. And then I'm going to have to take steps into the dark. And so the, I'll just kind of share this with you because you guys know how my life is. I travel all the time and we're in different spots and we live in different countries and all this kind of stuff. And so one of the practices that my wife and I have kind of together is that we sit down and we make what we feel is the best decision at the time with the resources that we have. And so sometimes, yeah, we book these things, we'll get everything going and we're all set up and then we go and we are got our Airbnb for the next six months and it, it's not what we thought it was going to be or there's something wrong or there's something this. And we, what we don't do is, go, is play the woulda, coulda, shoulda game because what we say is we did all that we could to um, make the best decision that we could at the time. Like that, Obviously, if I had a time machine and talking to the future Jared, my, he would say, hey, Jared, watch out for this. But at the time, I, 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 I only had limited uh, experience and resources. And so I made the best decision I could with the limited resources and experience that I had. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay that I made this decision. And so, yes, it hasn't panned out. But I'm not mad at myself that I made this decision. The only times I do truly get mad at myself is when something f- falls through the cracks. In which case, that's a learning experience. So you're like, oh my gosh, I, sh- I, I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't think about this. Man, had I... Had I taken a little bit more time to think about that, I probably wouldn't have done that. That's what it really bothers me. So that's the a- advice I would give is like you're going to lose money. Like it's – it's you're not – I've said this before. If you're not losing money, you're just lucky. So you're going to lose money at times and there's going to be times you invest in a, in a lot of inventory and that inventory doesn't sell and you're, oh my gosh. Or you know, for me, I remember I, I, I switched suppliers. That was ch- a cheaper supplier for me and it was terrible. Like the quality I got was really bad. And so then I'm selling this really bad product and my reviews started to show. And at that time, it was kind of earlier in the social years. But the so, I, I did go viral to a degree on people complaining about some stuff and kind of trying to put me on blast. And I was like, yo, I got to pivot. And so I took a huge loss in money in pretty much recalling the entire product and then sending everyone out vouchers 
to get a new one and then yeah it was a lot it was a big big expense so so i share that with you so that you can see like this happens like it's just part of life and that you develop yourself as this happens so all i'm trying to do is let you see that it's going to happen and that there are ways to cope with it as it's happening and how to best solve it so be prepared it's going to happen in your life keep pressing through i i promise you 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 will either grow a business or grow yourself who can then continue to grow either that business or multiple businesses in the future from this entire experience okay guys till next week